imagine office space to look like, feel, smell, function 20, 30 years from now? The nature of work is changing. Most probably in 20, 30 years, what could be automated would be machines will take over whatever can be taken over. There will be no repetitive jobs. So how would we work? I don't know. But what I know is that even though the nature of work will change totally, buildings we are having today will still be there. That's why the main aim of the design today is to make buildings future-proof, adaptable and flexible to the needs we don't even know today. There are two environments we are affected by, global and local one. And the design needs to respond to both in a local context. Consider how much time you and your friends spent at work. Could be over half of our lives. Hmm. So how would it be to work more in a space which is more like your personal space? Just maybe think for a moment about that. Close your eyes. So, one would think that you would like to have fresh air, don't you? Natural light, no noise, comfortable and peaceful, yeah, would be good. So people don't get stressed, healthy talents around you. Sounds good. With nice amenities in the building, so it helps you to integrate work and life better. With fittings that don't outgas, so you are not getting sick after a couple of days being there. Hmm, good. What else? Space where you can be at your best, where you can perform to a higher grade. I would say it would be good if it's all, all, uh, also looking good, with nice, timeless design looking good regardless of age. Anything else? Hmm, quite a lot of those. Imagine the difficulty of designing the space which is answering all your needs today, preparing for future, with technology answering future needs. So let's take a few moments to think how we can achieve that together. What does future proof mean? But even more importantly, what it's going to do for you. Let's take a look at a couple of friends, trends which are believed to shape the buildings of the future. So, for people by people, focus on diversity and inclusion. Then we have in symbiosis with nature, independent and self-sufficient, and the last but not least, adaptable and flexible. It's all start with the design. That's the phase of the project life cycle where you have the biggest impact on your project, when all the decisions you are taking at that stage will influence your building in the future. We are bringing best partners, some of them here today with us, broad international knowledge and great choice of materials to make timeless space, contributing to high quality which is part of our Scandinavian heritage. Comfortable, good-looking, beautiful, a lovely space to be in and to be surrounded by, where you can be at your best, both during and after working hours. Space created by people for people. And because of nature of work is changing, boundary between work and leisure is getting fuzzy. 
That's why we need buildings which are serving those changing needs. Moving your body is good for you. Yes? Breathing with fresh air as well. Changing places that you can do in the workplaces where you can choose where you want to work. Whether it's a focus room, chill out area, experience lab, conference room, place of your choice. Engage in something which will re-energize you. Go out. Maybe having a walking meeting in a green area, or going to the gym. Running a bit at the roof, why not? Going out and doing something which makes you feel better about yourself, it's a good choice. Then you go to the restaurant, when you can eat what you enjoy and fits well with your diet in a healthy restaurant downstairs in the building. That will keep you healthy and productive. It's all available already today in well-certified buildings. We all want to live in human-friendly cities with integrated functions, with majority of which are accessible within walking or biking distance. And future-proof means designed to contribute to sustainable city development for you and your kids. I'm pregnant now with my second daughter. And why I want to be proud, showing my girls in 20, 30 years from now, the projects that I'm working already on today. And be proud, because that's going to be a healthy and good space for them. Good-looking buildings with technology which will answer their needs, their needs in the future. Buildings without barriers, accessible by everyone, regardless of age, sex, gender, different kinds of disabilities, permanent or temporary ones. Imagine changing demographies, war for talents that we are having everywhere. Why not to choose from the full pool of talents? A great programmer needs his brain, regardless of whether or not his legs are in a good shape at the moment. Don't you think so? The other very important dimension here, sustainability. In the 20th century, skyscrapers gave cities control over the third dimension. In this century, future-proof space gives us control over the fourth, time. And sustainability is all about that dimension. To last through time. To sustain our ability to live in that world. Sounds quite important, don't you think so? And here I have a question to you. Let's take malaria, war, famine, air pollution, acids, tobacco, tuberculosis. Which of these do you think kill most of the people each year? Anyone? Did I hear air pollution? Yes. Actually, air pollution kills as many people as all the other together every year. Adding to that, that 40% of the energy consumption globally goes for buildings, and unfortunately, majority of the energy is still dirty one. By the way, that's why we are briefing the air quality we are briefing in Warsaw. It looks like we have some opportunity there, saving both money and lives. That's why independent and self-sufficient buildings are just a must-have for the future. First of all, because it's a right thing to do, and it's because we are saving money as well. Yeah, for 
ourselves, but also for those who will come later. Here comes the great example of the technology that we are investing in. Soon it will cover facades of our buildings. Perovskites. Perovskites is a technology which is much more flexible, semi-transparent, much lighter, cheaper, and more efficient than traditional photovoltaics. Perovskite is a titanium compound which enables production of the per uh, photovoltaics which having all, all those features. Sounds like a breakthrough technology, don't you think so? Imagine what can be achieved with that technology. It will be nothing like we got used today. That technology has the power to change totally the way we are thinking about the energy. Buildings that don't need to be plugged in into the grid. How about covering pavements, schools, cars with that? Sounds interesting. Something to think about. And by the way, first time I've heard about perovskites was on the similar event like that, a couple years ago. I've managed to convince my board to invest in that technology, and I'm proud that soon we will really use it. Still this year, we want to cover one of our buildings with that technology. But coming back to trends. In symbiosis with nature, it's all about bringing biodiversity to the cities. Nature makes us feel good, makes us feel healthier. We think better, we are more productive. So helping nature to sustain in the cities, we can create healthy and nice working environment, pushing productivity up, lowering sick leaves, and increasing employees' retention. Sounds easy. And the last trend, fourth one. Adaptable and flexible buildings. The nature of work is changing, that we know. It is more and more project-oriented, not necessarily bound by the geography, but rather by our biology and time. More and more of us work as a freelancers, and corporations are also following that trend. So having flexible projects, you need flexible project teams and flexible space. We know that. That trend already today influenced the way we are using office space. Corporations want and need to have the access to startups to creativity, flexibility, having an ecosystem which inspire people, which make them inspire each other on a daily basis. So I know that you don't know how much space you will need in three years, and that's fine. We embodied flexibility in our future-proof buildings. And for example, in Skanska, it's a business link. It's a flexible office space available on demand for individuals or group of people for weeks, months, same as conference facilities in different geographies across the CE region. That's our answer to that trend, but it's a global one. I'm sure that all of you, or at least majority, have heard about WeWork. That's the biggest global player in a flexible co-working solutions. The other dimension of this trend is the usage of big data to, to help us in our lives. Buildings start thinking for us. And we know how to translate buildings data into services that will make your life easier. We build technology into fabrics of our buildings to serve us better. Having smart connected building, you can adjust almost, almost each aspect of your daily work. Let's check what it can be. 
light, temperature, desk settings. You can adjust that before even entering the office via an app on your mobile phone. What else do we have here? Real-time da data management. You can use it to see the utilization of the space, to book the conference room, hot desk, again, with your mobile. It can also help you in your social life using the social wall, either in your mobile or on interactive screens where you can see available amenities around, public transportation information, how long it will take you to get to the bus stop or to the metro when your train or bus is leaving. You will get the information about the cultural events, what's there in the cinema tonight, but also about most important social events in the building. Salsa classes, someone is getting married or having a free spot for carpooling tonight. Why not to join? Activity-based parking, equipped with sensors, will guide you to the free spot. And building access with your mobile or smartwatch. So you don't need to get your card, which usually people are leaving somewhere for getting somewhere. It's much easier with the smart device of your choice. You will have access to the virtual reception being able to send the invitation to the meeting together with the access code in a form of QR code, so your guests don't need to wait and register at the reception. And last but not least, some other stuff which building can do for you. For example, you can leave your laundry at the concierge while getting to the building, of course, if you want to. So. I would like to invite you to the space powered by its own facade, where you can focus on your business in personalized, friendly, healthy, smart environment, where you can be at your best both today and tomorrow doing your fantastic creative projects. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, we've already got a question. Look at this. Uh, Future-proof buildings, design, construction, and then operations. How do the three stages work together? Wow, we don't have an hour to discuss it, but maybe in a nutshell. Try it. Wow, <laughs> that's do, a big question. Where do you start? Uh, but basically, you use technology for that, and you remember about the human needs. So we use the technology for the design. You use free. Uh, 3D, uh, 3D design, you use uh, BIM 360, so you can foresee and you can also see how the different kind of equipment will interact with each other in the building. Then you build in a different kind of sensors in the building that can measure a lot of things, like the quality of air, the light, temperature, so you can use it during, during the operations. And what's their construction? Yes, during the construction, okay, you can use a lot of automatics, but also having the design prepared already in BIM 360, it helps you a lot. It shows you, like, in three dimensions what you are designing, so it helps you to save a lot of money and time and to be very precise on the design stage and construction stage. Coming back to the, uh, the human angle for a moment. Um, you've been named one of the um, leading ladies in sustainability in Poland. Well, that's nice, but... Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> when will you be named one of the leading people in sustainability in Poland? What will it take for that old-fashioned mindset to go away. Why? That's actually very why good ladies? question. Come on. Very good question. That is all about diversity and inclusion. Unfortunately, we still think about lady. Mm -hmm. Oh, something to observe. Who is she? What she will do? Until we will not reach the critical mass, which is, uh, we, which is believed is like 30%, then 
individuals are not uh, any longer individuals. They are becoming a part of the bigger group. So you are not assessed by your gender or something that what makes you different, but by your qualities and who you are and how you are contributing to the, to the team. So there is still some way to go, unfortunately. But uh, I think it's on us here. And I'm like a big fan of quotas. So I believe we need to accelerate to get to that stage where when we will not any longer discuss ladies as a minority in a business, oh, just, just as a human being. Yeah, just as a matter of interest, um, we have a fair number of people here in the, in, in the audience who, in whose company that you, like, that you know of, um, is there such a thing as an uh, inclusiveness um, policy or a diversity policy? Not many. I mean, that's what, like one in 10? One in 15, maybe? I really encourage you all to have such policies. It's really worth it. Having diverse teams means very often having winning teams. So. Well, the thing, the thing about diversity, and we've still got a minute and 20 seconds according to my, to my uh, um, time okay. that I'm here. <laughs> so we can keep going. The thing about diversity that, that I find particularly interesting is uh, uh, there is a very simple explanation as to why it is good for business. Because it's difficult. And it makes you think. It makes you actually uh, look at reality in, you know, from, from different perspectives. Yes. We, so you actually end up with a different paradigm than, than you had before. It's, um, and it's been demonstrated that it's good for business, isn't it? When you have people with different backgrounds, different genders, different way of thinking, the chance of not making a mistake is much higher because you have those different point of views. People start challenging each other, have a different kind of ideas. It's really good for innovations. When you want to raise the innovations and creativity in the organization, just bring a lot of different people. They think differently, having different ideas, and it pays back. So I brought to the company a pair of skids, but uh, there are some other great ideas that we are working on at the moment that was brought by a lot of other people. And, and, and it's great that you can test it, that you can try it, and that's how you are creating the future. That's innovation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.